Hey there, watchers. Today I thought we would try something new. This video will be the first in what I hope to be a series detailing the process that I went through researching, concepting, and then building a custom PC. I'm not an expert, so I could get things wrong, but this is also not my first PC build, so I do have some amateur experience in the field. Let's start with what I'm currently working with. This is my Asus G15. I bought it in 2021 during the height of the GPU crisis for $1,500. At the time, this is what a $1,000 RX 6900 cost on the AMD website. And after being verbally abused by a scalper, I decided to walk into a Best Buy and get whatever gaming PC I could for what the scalper's GPU would have cost me. The G15 is an excellent machine for portable computing, sporting an AMD Ryzen 9 in addition to its Radeon 6800M GPU. At the time, I worked as a courier for an asphalt contractor and spent about four months of the year living out of different hotels in Salt Lake. My primary task was delivering road closure notices to homeowners and businesses in advance of road work, which meant a lot of travel and logistical support. The laptop ended up being a better fit for me at the time than a full-size desktop, which I had been trying to build, but soon after gave up and parted out. In the thick of the GPU crisis, it just wasn't possible to get the parts that I needed to build even a mid-tier PC, and I decided it was best to exit the market and wait things out. Over the next few months, I upgraded the RAM to a 32 gigabyte kit from Crucial and the memory from around about 500 gigs to 4 terabytes across two XPG Lite M.2 drives. The end result was perfect for portable 1080p gaming, but could still support 1440p with an external monitor, which you see right here. For the next two years, this laptop followed me everywhere and even became a part of my office work setup for a time. As gaming laptops go, this kit, which I bought to spite a scalper, turned out to be one of the best value laptops on the market. And it remains so even with its more recent iterations. This laptop won't win any benchmarks or please a performance hound, but it will play Destiny 2 at medium settings with 60 plus frames per second reliably, though I dial it down to minimum graphical settings to get as close to 144 frames as I can. With a RAM and memory upgrade, Video editing became a practical possibility. Onboard power is adequate for 1080p OBS capture and video rendering. This whole ensemble you see here plays double duty as my home office and gaming rig. My setup's based around a Husky workbench that I got at Home Depot for a little under 200 bucks. It's very stable, has a small support crossbar along the bottom that you can't see here that keeps it from vibrating and it comes with a hand crank that allows you to change the height to whatever you wish. With a few minutes work I can make this into a standing desk. The only real constraint I have to overcome is repositioning some cables that might get ripped out of their sockets if I just do that on the spur of the moment. The central monitor runs at 1440p and can sustain 144 FPS, which is more power than the laptop's able to deliver. The smaller wing monitors on either side here are portable ASUS USB 3s that run off of a serial USB hub alongside the additional external hard drive dock and USB Blu-ray player that I use for archiving old videos. This full HOTAS rig provides input for Elite Dangerous alongside an Xbox controller and recording microphone. This setup was the best I could make of the GPU crisis and has been an excellent workstation. But it has a few drawbacks that have ultimately pushed me towards an upgrade. First, I regularly max out this laptop's available capability. OBS, Elite Dangerous, Discord, Chrome, and a battery of third-party software tools supporting Elite Dangerous all come together to tax the onboard hardware at nearly 90% of its capacity. I am at the limit of what this laptop can reliably deliver, and while I could get more with manual overclock tuning, this would come at the cost of system stability, which I value more than performance. Second, when in my home configuration, 
I've used up all my USB controllers available ports and bandwidth. If I connect anything else to the system, it refuses to read the device until I disconnect something. Every single one of the three USB ports on this laptop is connected to a powered external USB hub because the laptop simply isn't capable of operating everything by itself. This is not a strike against Asus. I doubt any regular laptop user needs as many USB devices as I do. Third, power constraints from the USB controller on the laptop mean that I have to use externally powered USB hubs. I have extra wires and bricks for three hubs, the external drive dock, Blu-ray player, and other devices, all of which require a power outlet. The end result is a cable management nightmare. Fourth, noise from the laptop's cooling system. The G15 is driven by two small impeller-style fans that draw cool air up through the bottom to expel it out the sides and rear. The system is effective and easily handles multi-hour gaming sessions at near full load, but it's noisy, a common problem that all laptops suffer from. This shows up in my videos as a background whine, which I'm able to suppress using Audio Director. But it's always there. These four principal issues are what I hope to address with a custom build, and will compose the four major constraints that this build will need to overcome, in addition to some other requirements intended to help this system better fit my needs. First, my new computer needs to be able to crunch multitasking workloads on multiple monitors. The primary monitor is going to be the same one, uh, running at 1440p, 144Hz. These support monitors will be running at 1080p, 60Hz, and will probably get upgraded in the future. Ideally, whatever I end up settling on is going to have three monitors in total. Maybe more, but I don't know, more than three feels a little excessive to me, at least right now. The second constraint is support for at least 15 parallel USB devices whether these are 15 physical ports, or that number can be achieved through a hub or two, isn't so important so long as all the devices that I need can be connected simultaneously. The third constraint is clean cable management. Both the interior and the exterior of the computer need to promote it, either by reducing the need for cabling as much as possible, or by offering good channels and pathways into which I can put all of the wires that I don't want visible. Even now, you can see on my computer desk, hopefully at least, that I've got a lot of stuff crisscrossing in different directions, and as bad as it looks up here, it's actually worse underneath. The fourth constraint is improved noise control and system cooling compared to the laptop. I need my new system to endure extended practical loads while maintaining a quiet profile. Changes in fan volume should be subtle and avoid lagging or surging abruptly. I want this system to be as practical as it is fun, so I won't be targeting flamboyant or over-engineered parts. Things like component RGB, system livery, and, and other frills are going to be avoided in favor of a clean, high-performance, conservative build. I do want it to be visually distinctive, but not to the point of becoming distracting. I also want a system that is easy to maintain and repair or upgrade if the need should arise. To help keep things topically focused, my plan is to break this video series into chunks covering different aspects of the build. I go about setting my system up differently than a lot of professionals, mostly just out of personal tastes. So the next video that I do is going to cover case selection and some overarching considerations that I have when selecting the rest of the parts in the build. I'll see you all soon.